Hi everyone, this is Bolash from Racing Brick. This is my third video about the brand new LEGO Ideas 21344 Orient Express. Today we are going to move this huge set under its own power, mainly trying to do it with as few modifications as possible and using standard LEGO electronics, but in the end we will give it some extra juice with this Boovies unit so make sure to stick around. My first video was released at the unveiling. I had the opportunity to talk to the LEGO Ideas team about the set and in that video there is a lot of background information, the reasons for the changes and so on. The second video was my detailed building review, showing all the interesting aspects of the build process, highlighting all the cool techniques, interesting parts used, but also some issues like the misprinted stickers and tiles with the city names. If you haven't seen these videos yet, I recommend to watch them first, as always the link is in the top right corner. There's also something I would like to ask, we are getting closer and closer to 200,000 subscribers and it would be amazing if we hit that mark before the end of the year. If you haven't subscribed yet, please smash that button, I would really appreciate it. You will find detailed set reviews and other LEGO videos around here every week. So, if you see my videos about the set, then you probably know that one of the biggest disappointments, besides the locomotive change of course, was the lack of official motorization. According to the LEGO Ideas team, they really tried every power source and motor combination and tested them for months, but they couldn't find a satisfactory solution to make the train move. As they said, the two wagons and the locomotive are just too heavy, twice as heavy as a regular powered city train. The lead designer of the set really wanted the motorization to happen, but they had to give up the idea. Today we will try out some solutions and combinations and try to repeat those tests and their results. At the end of my review I gave you a sneak peek of the city freight train and I have to admit that I deliberately chose a very poor configuration. The locomotive was trying to push the whole train on a layout, where the Orient Express was mostly on a curve, so it was no surprise that the wheels were slipping. Despite the setup, the train started moving after a while, even spinning up on the straight section, but slowing down again and even stopping on the curves. So before trying anything meaningful today, let's see the weight results first. The locomotive and the tender of the Orient Express together weighed 577 grams. Dining car 623 grams, sleeping car 664, a total of 1864 grams. Let's see the city freight train, locomotive 473 grams, all cars together 639 grams, 1112 in total. As you can see the Orient Express does not weigh twice as much as the freight train as a whole, but if we check the weight of the cars to be pulled, it is almost exactly twice as much. You've seen that it's not a good idea to push the whole Orient Express, what if we put the locomotive between the wagons and the tender? We still have a lot of slipping, the train eventually moves, but there's another problem, the tender won't stay on the track. It is hollow and light and the city locomotive pushes it from behind so that's kind of logical. Back to the basics, the wagons weigh twice as much as the city train, so can the city locomotive pull the two Orient Express wagons at all? Well, without any effort. It runs almost as fast as the original city configuration, zero slipping and a pretty frightening speed actually. Here's another test with the tender added as well. As you can see, it's quite stable and runs just as fast as before. If the locomotive can be powered, there shouldn't be many problems. Time to see the cars with the crocodile locomotive. They run together beautifully and look great. I mean, I like the color scheme of the Orient Express locomotive, but maybe a different color could have been even better. Now let's try the first modification and this will be the easiest. This is not my idea, I saw it in a video by Stud City. you can find the link in the top right corner. He used the power functions configuration, we will use powered up. I take the train motor from the freight locomotive, remove one of the bogies from this car, yes that piece wants to stay there, and just attach the motor like a direct swap. This is probably not the most stable and secure solution, but it should work for the test. The city hub slides into the tender, as you could see in my previous video, and since the door for the cable is in the front, I will do a simple trick and turn the tender around, otherwise the cable would be too short. Now everything is connected, let's see how it works. Well, this happened in the Stud City video too, although not as often as here, but he had more straight sections between the curves. As the motor and the wagon is pushing the tender, despite the weight of the hub it derails quite often and it is practically pushed off the rails by the powered car. This was a simple solution, but perhaps not the best. Let's try powering that locomotive instead. 
There are already several solutions posted by train enthusiasts in the corresponding Eurobricks forum. Some people have used the medium linear motor, others the large motor. I opted for the large motor because it has more power, more torque, and I can use the Crocodile control profile directly in the Powered Up app. I didn't stick strictly to one of the solutions, but took what I found since I don't have that many non-Technic LEGO pieces. This may not be the most sturdy or magnificent version, but as a proof of concept it should work perfectly. I'm sure there will be several tutorials on Rebricable after the set is released. So, the cable runs through the cab, it is long enough to reach the hub in the tender. We need to fire up the crocodile profile and off we go. So, it is still not good, the locomotive runs in place, it doesn't have enough traction. We need to borrow something else from the crocodile train, namely the red rubber bands on the wheels. And that's it, problem solved, the train is running. No obvious slippage, the speed is fine, I think it's a bit slower than the city loco, but it's perfectly fine for me. It's worth noting that I run the train on rechargeable AAA batteries, so a fresh pack of alkalines or special 1.5V lithium-ion rechargeables would make the train even faster. Now let's try it in reverse. It's a bit slower, because pushing is not as good as pulling as we saw earlier, but it runs ok. I did multiple tests, it did run for minutes without any issue, and the tender only derailed once. I tried to capture it later with different camera angles, but couldn't replicate it, so it's not a very frequent problem. So, as a proof of concept, I think we can agree that the train can be motorized with a small city hub and a large motor, and probably with other combinations as well. It's not perfect and might have some rare issues reversing, but I'm sure the train community will come up with something reliable very soon after release. If the only thing holding you back from buying it is the lack of motorization option, then it's definitely possible. Additional parts will be needed though, besides the motor and the hub, that's for sure. And here's another obligatory test, how does it work with the Buvis 3.0 unit? It fits into the tender, although some modifications would be necessary because of the connections on the top. This is the speed with more than 11 volts powering the motor, I think that's pretty impressive. And it can reliably run in reverse too, so I don't see why you wouldn't try powering this train, it is way more fun than a static model. So, here's the big question. Why did LEGO decide to leave this feature out? Why did they say the train is too heavy even though it clearly runs? Well, since we don't know their testing methods and especially the targets of these tests, we can be sure. I assume there are certain criteria that need to be met, and given the ridiculous speed and performance of the city trains or the crocodile locomotive, anything LEGO releases seems far too overpowered, so maybe their targets to reach are too high. Or perhaps the small anomaly with the tender in reverse also had something to do with it, but it only occurred once. Or maybe moving parts or wheels wear out faster due to the extra weight of the wagons, that's a possibility, but I'm not sure how we could test that compared to a regular city train. Other than this, I just have far wilder guesses. Let's pull out our tinfoil hat, it is speculation time. So, why didn't we get a motorized set by default? After all, it wouldn't be the first idea set with powered up parts, the motorized lighthouse had a dumb battery box and a simple medium linear motor, the piano had the same city hub as this one, a simple medium linear motor and even a sensor. But the lighthouse also cost 300 bucks with fewer parts, the piano was already 400 bucks with slightly more pieces. If this set included the hub and the motor, the price could have easily been 350 or even 400 dollars, I'm not sure many people would have liked that. Aside from the potential challenges we've seen here, why isn't there a motorization option? The availability of powered up components is very rhapsodic on LEGO.com. The hub and large motor are now available in the US, although on back order. The hub is out of stock in Europe, and the motor isn't even on the site. LEGO often plays this silly game. Instead of labeling electrical components as out of stock, they simply pull the product page regionally. Why is that? I have no idea. Maybe they don't want us to buy the powered up parts individually, only in sets, but then it would have gotten too expensive with these included, so maybe it was easier to drop the whole idea. Or maybe the future of powered up isn't so bright. Some motors have been retired, Mindstorms has been discontinued, it doesn't look very promising, but that's going too far, maybe we will talk about it in another video. So, this is what we get for 300 euros or dollars. Two nice, detailed and heavy wagons, a simpler but still pretty nice locomotive, though not comparable to the original submission, and a hopefully not too difficult motorization option, but not officially.
Oh, and a whole bunch of quality issues I mentioned in my review with the stickers, printed city names, band trails and so on. So, is it worth the price? To be honest, I'm not sure. We will see how much demand there will be upon release, which is the 1st of December by the way, but if I were you, I would wait a few more months until the set is available at other retailers. By then there will be solid motorization options and plenty of modifications developed by the community, so it's probably worth the wait and hopefully later releases will fix the quality issues as well. Let me know folks what you think of this set, if you are going to buy it, if you are buying it just for the cars, or if you want to motorize it, let's talk about it in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video then please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe with notifications as there will be more exciting LEGO videos coming soon. See you next time, bye bye.